Hello, today in this video, I will discuss all possible situations of inclined plane that students face in exam uh, as mechanics. So first of all, I will discuss equilibrium on the inclined plane. Then I will talk about if there is some net force and how to find acceleration on inclined plane. So you already know that what is an inclined plane. Inclined plane is a, a plane that makes an angle with some horizontal surface with x axis. So theta is the angle that this plane makes with this horizontal surface. So let's say we have an object on this inclined plane. And uh, let's say this object is in equilibrium. Okay. So uh, what are the forces that are acting on this object in this situation? In this situation, there are uh, forces like you, you may think that the one is the normal contact force that acts perpendicular to the surface. And uh, let's say this is N. This is perpendicular to this, uh, the surface, the, um, just the surface. Uh, so the perpendicular to the surface is normal contact force. And the other force is the weight that acts in the downward direction. This is weight of this object. Let's say this is W. And uh, what is the third force that is acting on the surface? The surface as this object is in rest. So uh, there must be a frictional force. And uh, what will be the direction of frictional force? Uh, should it be... Uh, in the upward direction or in the downward direction. So for this, you should know that we can resolve this force weight into two components. Uh, one is perpendicular to the surface and other component is parallel to the surface. And you know that if this angle is theta, then by trigonometry, you can verify that this angle is also theta. And how it is theta, let's say, ke, uh, you know, this is 90 degree. And if this is theta, then this angle is 90 minus theta. So if this is 90 minus theta, then uh, you can say that if this is 90 minus theta and this this component of weight is perpendicular to this. So then this is theta. So whole angle is 90. So if this is 90 minus theta, this the remaining part should be theta. Okay. So this part of the weight is uh, uh, that is the perpendicular to this surface. And we have to resolve this weight. That is uh, weight has two components. One is this component and other is this component. So Using trigonometry, you can uh, you know that this component of the weight is W cos theta. And this component of weight is W sin theta. So this weight, we have, we have splitted this weight into two parts, two perpendicular parts. One is the one is acting perpendicular to the plane that is W cos theta and other is W sin theta. So now you can easily understand that what should be the direction of frictional force. If W cos theta is acting in the downward direction parallel to the plane, then there must be uh, some force in the upward direction to balance this force. And you know that uh, the net force on an object, when object is at rest, the net force is zero. So the frictional force is acting in the upward direction to cancel this, this component W sine theta. So uh, the, the net force in any direction must be zero as this object is in equilibrium. So if we, if we equate forces parallel to perpendicular to the plane, then you can see that there are two forces acting perpendicular to the plane. One is N and other is W cos theta and they are they are equal and they, they are acting in the opposite direction. So if you have to find the normal contact force, then that will be equal to W cos theta. Okay. So what is frictional force? 
the forces parallel to the plane there are two forces one is friction force and other is the component of weight w uh, that is w sin theta so friction force f or is equal to w sin theta so uh, one thing i should clear you that this is these two are the norm these two are the contact forces this is also contact force and this is also contact force okay so when two surfaces are in contact then there will be a friction force and there will also be normal contact force if there is no physical contact of any two objects like if you have this object and this object is uh, is not in contact with this uh, the surface then there is no frictional force and no normal contact force okay so basically these two are the components of contact force and if you have to find the normal contact force then this is n and if you have to find the component of the contact force that is parallel to the plane that is this is this is fr so fr is the component of contact force that is parallel to the plane and n is the n is the component of contact force that is perpendicular to the plane so frictional force is w sin theta and uh, normal contact force is w cos theta okay so if uh, instead of this uh, if it is stated that this is this object is in limiting equilibrium in limiting equilibrium then you know that the friction force is maximum in limiting equilibrium friction force is the maximum friction force and you know that what is the what is the maximum friction force the maximum friction force fr depends on the nature of surface and the normal contact force so the maximum friction force is always equal to mu times uh, r where r is normal contact force over here i i have used n for this but you can use uh, r for this as well so mu r r mu mu n so what is this mu this mu is the coefficient of friction and uh, what is the unit of this mu mu is the ratio of frictional force and normal contact force so this force is in newton and normal contact force is also in newton so friction coefficient of friction has no unit okay so if uh, if there is less friction then the coefficient of friction will be smaller if um, the greater value of coefficient of friction will indicate that the friction force is larger and the second thing is friction for maximum friction force depends on the normal contact force okay so if greater the normal contact force then there will be greater maximum friction force and if you reduce normal contact force then fric maximum friction force will decrease so in this situation you can see that normal contact force is equal to w cos theta so if i change if i increase this angle if theta of this inclined plane is increased will the normal contact force increase or decrease this is very important question so you know that the normal contact force is w cos theta that is equal to this component so if you will increase theta then w cos theta this component will reduce this component will reduce and this component will increase okay so you know that if theta is increase then the value of cos theta decreases okay so normal contact force will decrease and the maximum frictional force will decrease if you will increase angle theta the plane and if you decrease angle theta then this component w cos theta will w cos theta will will increase so the normal contact force will increase and if if this surface has zero angle with x axis with this plane then the situation becomes like this 
So what is angle over here? If theta becomes zero, then the situation is like this. And you can easily see that in this case, normal contact force. What is the normal contact force in this case? Normal contact force R is equal to the weight of object. So R is equal to the weight of object if theta is zero. And you can verify from this expression. If you put theta as zero degree, then normal contact force will be equal to W cos of zero and cos of zero is one. So normal contact force becomes equal to the weight of object. So uh, this was the first situation that if the object is in equilibrium on the inclined plane, then how to deal with it. And if it is in limiting equilibrium, then the frictional force will be equal to the mu r. And if we have to find the coefficient of friction, then you can put maximum friction force over here. So what we are doing, we are putting in this equation, w sine theta. And in case of limiting equilibrium, the friction force will be the maximum friction force. And that is equal to mu r. And if we have to find coefficient of friction, then we put normal contact force. The value of normal contact force is W cos theta. So this is W sine theta. So what, what we are going to get, this rate will cancel out. So the coefficient of friction will be equal to sine theta over cos theta. That is equal to tan theta. So I have discussed a very general situation in front of you, but in paper you will face uh, a situation with with the with the values, uh, numerical values will be given to you. Mass of object will be given, and theta will be given, and you have to find the coefficient of friction. Then you will use the same situation like this. Okay, so now uh, let's discuss another situation where. Let's say we have this situation. And now in this situation, I will apply some force on this object. So the same object is this, mass M. And let's say I have applied a force F in this direction. And the force is applied at angle of, let's say this angle is alpha. And mass of object is M. So this object is also in equilibrium. Okay. And uh, if you have to find that uh, in what direction frictional force will be acting. Okay. So what will you do? Basically, you will solve, you will resolve forces. And uh, your reference direction will be pa parallel to the plane and perpendicular to the plane. And you know that weight is acting in this way. And what, what you will do, you will resolve the weight into two components. One is, this component is W, this is weight, and this is W cos theta. You know that this is theta, as we have already discussed. And this parallel to the plane, the component of weight is W sine theta. So what are you going to do with this force F? As this force is making some angle with this plane horizontal, uh, this inclined plane. So this, we will also resolve this force F into two component. One is parallel to the plane. This is F cos alpha. And other component of this force is, I can draw over here, that is, perpendicular to the plane. And this is F sine alpha. These two are perpendicular. And the third thing I have not shown over here is the normal contact force. And normal contact force is perpendicular to the surface. This is N. Let's say this is R. So how you will decide in which direction the friction force is acting? You know that parallel to the plane, 
there are two forces acting okay so what are these forces one is f cos alpha and other is w sin theta so you will compare this f cos alpha with w sin theta so if w cos theta alpha is smaller than w sin theta if this force is smaller than this force then the friction force will be acting in the upward direction okay if it is not stated in an exam usually it is it is stated that this object is about to slip in the downward direction then this mean that the friction force will be acting in the upward direction okay or in other words if it is stated that this force f is sufficient to uh prevent this object to slip down the plane then the friction force will be acting in the upward direction so in this case friction force fr will be acting in the upward direction the parallel to the plane okay so friction force will be supporting this f cos alpha but in another way if f cos alpha is greater than w sin theta then this object will be in point of slipping in the upward direction then this object will be uh, in limiting equilibrium to slip in the upward direction then in this case friction force will be acting in the in downward direction then in this situation friction force will be acting in this in this situation in in the downward direction so okay so let's say uh, if we have to uh, if it is stated that the friction force is acting in the upward direction then uh, how to write the equation and how to find the coefficient of friction so let's assume this is our situation and it is stated that the object is at the point of slipping uh, in the downward direction okay so friction force is acting in the upward direction so we, what we are going to uh, um, do we are going to write down the equations okay so first i will uh, write equation perpendicular to the plane okay so if you if you see there are f sin alpha is perpendicular to the plane r is perpendicular to the plane w cos alpha theta is perpendicular to the plane and there are three forces only three forces which are acting perpendicular to the plane and forces in the upward direction you can see that these two forces r and f sin alpha they are in the same direction and this w cos alpha is in the opposite direction so some of as this object is in in equilibrium this shows that the net force in any direction must be zero so some of some of forces uh in perpendicular direction must also be zero and some of forces parallel to the plane must also be zero so forces r and f sin alpha they are acting in the same direction they must be equal to w cos theta okay so if we have to find the normal contact force the component of frictional force that is acting in the that is acting perpendicular to the plane then we will find r and r will be in this case will be w cos theta minus f sin alpha in exam you will be provided with uh, uh, you can be provided with theta alpha f and w and you have to find where uh, normal contact force and forces parallel to the plane okay now i will write second equation that is i will equate forces parallel to the plane you can think about this that how many forces are acting in parallel to the plane one is uh, one is f psi, f cos alpha and uh, the other one is that is acting in this direction and friction force is also acting in this direction and in the downward direction there is only one force that is w sin theta so 
what i am going to write i am going to equating i am going to equate them that is f cos alpha plus friction force is equal to uh, is equal to w sin of theta okay so friction force is w sin theta these are general equation okay minus f cos of alpha so if it is stated that this object is in limiting equilibrium then you have to put friction force as mu r okay so friction force is let's say let's assume that we have to find the expression for coefficient of friction and we know that we have obtained frictional force and normal contact force so what we are going to do we are going to put these two values value of r expression of r and expression of frictional force in this equation okay to find coefficient of friction so coefficient of friction will be fr divided by normal contact force so that is w sin theta minus f cos alpha divided by the value of the expression for r w cos theta minus f sin alpha don't worry about these general relations relationships basically in exam you will be provided with some known quantities and you have to find some uh, some unknown for example if we assume that we are given this force f and if if you are given this force f value of alpha value of theta mass of object and what you have to find you have to find uh, coefficient of friction if it is stated that this object is in limiting equilibrium and uh, this object is at the point of slipping in the downward direction okay so if it is stated that this object is at point of slipping in the upward direction then frictional force will be in the downward direction okay so you you should you should know these two situations okay ji so let me introduce one more situation suppose this is mass m that that is placed on the inclined plane and suppose that this force f acts in this direction okay and uh, the angle with the plane is theta and the force is acting uh, parallel force is acting in the horizontal direction okay so this object is in equilibrium and uh, this is at the point of slipping in the upper direction okay so this let's assume this is the situation this object is a point of slipping in the upward direction so write down equations for normal contact force and uh, frictional force and then write down the expression for coefficient of friction this is our situation so the first thing the starting point should be you should draw all forces acting on this object so this is weight of object that is acting in the vertical direction okay and the second thing is normal contact force that is always acting perpendicular to the plane okay so let's say this is r and this object is at the point of slipping in the upper direction this shows that the frictional force is acting in the downward direction 
okay so friction force let's say this is friction force okay so these are uh, only four forces that are acting on this object and what you will do you will resolve weight and uh, you will find two components of weight one is perpendicular to the plane this is the same situation and uh, you know that if this is theta and this angle must be theta so this component is the view cos theta and the other component of weight you can also draw over here but this acts on this object and uh, you must always draw in this direction on at this point and these two components are perpendicular and this is the view sin theta r is always perpendicular to the surface and we will not resolve r because there is no component of r parallel to the plane and now the very important thing is we have to resolve this f as well we will make a triangle and uh, using trigonometry you can verify that as this f is parallel to this horizontal surface so if the surface is making angle theta with the horizontal then this is also making angle theta with this f so this is angle theta this is very important thing and this force w has two components one component is in the upward direction and other is acting in the downward direction and using vector addition vector component at to tell rule you should know that this is very important thing that this component is acting in the downward direction because the force is acting in this way and these two components must add up to give this force f okay so the head of this component should be connected with the tail of this component and what is the value of this component the value of this component is f this is up, uh, opposite to the angle so this is f sin theta and this component is f cos theta so now if you want to uh, redraw this figure to clear all the forces acting on this object then you you can draw in this way this force f sin theta is acting in the upward direction this is sorry f cos theta and uh, w sin theta is acting in the downward direction i must draw in over here this is w sin theta and uh, one force is acting let me change the color this is f sin theta that is acting perpendicular to the plane and uh, one is w cos theta this is component of weight and one other force that is a uh, normal contact force and that is acting in this wait a second sorry normal contact force is acting in this direction and that is perpendicular to the surface and the last thing is the friction force that is also acting in the downward direction okay so this is another way of drawing forces and that uh, you have to you have to include only the parts of this weight and uh, part of this force f you have to use their components and you don't have to use f and w again because we have uh, we have split it weight and this force f into its into, uh, into their parts and uh, what are the forces perpendicular to the plane 
R is acting in the upper direction, you, you should see these arrows and this the F cos F this is uh -huh, this is F sine theta. I'm sorry. This is F sine theta that is acting in the downward direction. So F sine theta plus W cos theta. Okay, you can see, you can easily verify this. Uh, this force, this is normal contact force, or this is F sine theta, and uh, this is weight. Okay. So what about frictional force? Now, what I am going to write, I am going to write equations for forces parallel to the plane. And parallel to the plane, forces are, this is W cos theta, and this is uh, acting in the upward direction. And this is component of weight, W sin theta, that is always acting in the downward direction. So upward forces, W cos theta is equal to downward forces, that is friction force plus W sin theta. So if I have to find friction force, then I must make F or a subject of formula, that is F cos theta minus W sin theta. Okay, so if this object is in limiting equilibrium, then frictional force is equal to the maximum frictional force and that is always equal to mu r. And if you want to find coefficient of friction, but what you will do, you will put values of R and frictional force over here in this equation, and you will make mu as subject of formula, then you will get, you will put values of FR and value of R from here, and then you will simplify FR coefficient of friction. So we have discussed three situation and uh, where the object is in equilibrium on the inclined plane. So uh, let's say if we have another situation, now uh, what we are going to discuss, let's say this object is Sorry. Let's say this is this is sport, and uh, this object is a string is attached with this object, and uh, this object is in equilibrium. Let's discuss a very simple situation. If this object is in equilibrium and the surface is smooth, let's say this surface is smooth, then this means that there will be no friction force. And uh, what we are going to find, we have to find the expression for tension in this frame. So the first thing is, you must draw all forces acting on this object. One is weight of the object, other is normal contact force. Normal contact force is due to this surface. And uh, the third thing is the force due to the string, the pulling force, and that is tension. And tension is always, uh, we can, we can uh, only pull the objects due to string. Okay, so tension is always away from these objects. So at this point, the tension will be in this direction. This is a very important thing that most of the students are always confused that in which direction tension is acting. So this tension without this string, this object can't be in equilibrium on this smooth surface. And why? Because the component of weight that we have already discussed that the component of weight one component of weight will act perpendicular to the plane, that is W cos theta. This is very important to know. 
and other component of weight will act perpendicular to the plane sorry parallel to the plane and that is w sin theta and if there is no strain and on the smooth surface there will be no force in the upper direction and this object will slide down will accelerate down because w sin theta will be the net force on this object so now what we have to find we have to find the tension and after resolving weight we know that normal contact force is equal to w cos theta and this is these are forces perpendicular to the plane okay there are only two forces and forces parallel to the plane is tension that is acting in the upper direction forces parallel to the plane so tension is acting in the upper direction and w sin theta is acting in the downward direction they are acting in the opposite direction so if uh, if we had to find tension then tension is equal to the weight of uh, the component of weight that is equal to the w sin theta okay so if if you increase theta will the tension increase or decrease this is a very important question so if you increase theta this component of uh, weight will increase because sin theta will increase and if sin theta will increase then this component will increase so tension will increase okay so if theta becomes 90 degree then this situation becomes like this if theta becomes 90 degree then this is the situation then the plane looks like this okay so now tension and weight they are exactly in the opposite direction and tension becomes equal to the weight of object and you can also verify from this expression that if theta is 90 degree then sin of 90 is 1 so tension is equal to the weight of object okay ji now i am going to discuss if there is net force on the inclined plane and you have to find acceleration you know that if there is net force then there will be acceleration and according to newton second law that acceleration will be directly proportional to that net force and inversely proportional to the mass of object greater the net force greater will be the acceleration if you apply same net force on two masses then on the on, if the mass is smaller then there will be more acceleration okay so let's say we have this object and the surface is smooth the first simple situation is if the surface is smooth what will happen to this object will it stay there or will it slide down the question is the answer is it will slide down because there is a component of weight that is acting parallel to the plane and and that component of weight is we will do we will again resolve this weight into two components one is this this is angle theta this is very important to know that this angle is always theta and this component is w cos theta that is adjacent to this angle and this component is w sin theta and this is normal contact force so if the surface is smooth there is no friction force and uh, the object will the net force on the object is what is the net force on this object the net force on this object is w sin theta okay so this r and this component weight of the object will cancel each other will balance each other because there is no acceleration of the object perpendicular to the plane 
object is having acceleration in the downward direction object will slide down in the downward direction so what is the acceleration what is the net force on this object net force on this object is w sin theta okay so according to newton's second law net force is always equal to the mass time acceleration and weight is equal to mass time gravitational acceleration mg that is sin theta so acceleration is g sin theta so if the surface is smooth then the acceleration of all objects is independent of the mass of object and acceleration will be constant if you will increase this theta then sin theta will increase because sin 0 is 0 sin 50 is greater then sin 60 is greater than sin 50 so sin theta will increase so acceleration will increase okay but this acceleration a is smaller than the gravitational acceleration because the value of sin theta will be smaller than 1 if the theta is smaller than 90 degree but if i if i make theta as 90 degree then sin 90 will become 1 then acceleration will be equal to g then this of this situation will become free fall situation so okay so all objects will have same amount of acceleration and this is constant acceleration so you can use equation of motions to find the velocity of object at any point let's say you have this situation and what you have to find let's say this object is this object starts from rest so the mass of object is given let's say this is 10 kg mass and this angle is 60 degree and what we have to find we have to find velocity of the object over here after uh, moving down with a distance of let's say 5 meters so you know that how you will tackle you have to find final velocity and this is smooth surface so smooth surface mean acceleration over here the net force on this object is smooth surface mean there is no friction force and uh, the downward the net force on this object is w sin theta we had already done this and uh, this component of weight is w cos theta these are two components of weight so the net force is w sin theta that is equal to we have to find acceleration cost so that is equal to mg sin theta so acceleration will be g that is uh, g you can use 10 for simplicity over here so g is 10 meter per second square but the actual value of gravitational acceleration is 9.81 meter per second square so sin of 60 will give you 10 into 103 by 2 that is 503 this is the constant acceleration of this object okay so acceleration is constant and what you are given you are given initial initial velocity that is zero so if acceleration is constant you can use equation of motions and you have to find velocity after moving displacement of 5 meter and you know that acceleration is constant that is 503 meter per second square so which equ which equation relates these four quantities you know that 2 as is equal to v square minus u square so to find velocity you will put values in this equation that is 2 into this acceleration and then displacement that is 5 final velocity square minus initial velocity is 0 so you will find velocity after moving 5 meter distance so the basic idea is if acceleration is constant you can use equation of motions to find to predict the fi final state of object you can find velocity after any time you can find 
displacement after given time. So this is the basic idea. Okay, so this is how we uh, we calculate acceleration. And let's say if there is if there is friction force, and let's say this object is sliding down and uh, you are given coefficient of friction. If it is sliding down, if it is accelerating down, then you know that the friction force will be acting in the, in the opposite direction of motion. That is friction force will be acting in this direction. Because we are already given that this object is accelerating in the downward direction. So uh, friction force, and you know that during motion, the friction force will also be maximum, that is mu r. Okay. The coefficient of friction uh, when object is at rest, the coefficient of the maximum friction force uh, is known as static frictional force. And during motion, the maximum friction force is known as uh, dynamic frictional force, a kinetic, kinetic frictional force that is smaller than the maximum frictional force. Okay, so that that I have discussed in another video where the, how the friction force varies. So, but in mechanics, you will assume that the if the object is in motion, the friction force is is the same as the maximum friction force, the static friction force that is equal to mu r. So, what we are going to write, we are going to write equation for weight and these are components of weight again this is w cos theta and this component is acting in the downward direction that is w sin theta okay there is no other force uh, one force is normal contact force that is r if uh, object is accelerating down then this means that w sin theta is greater than friction force so net force will be equal to W sine theta force in the downward direction minus friction force that is acting in the upward direction. That net force will be equal to mass time acceleration. Okay. So if we are if we are given frictional force coefficient of friction and we have to find acceleration, what we do we will put frictional force over here that is mu time r and r is equal to W cos theta. Okay. So R is W cos of theta that is equal to mass time acceleration. If you are given friction force and you have to find acceleration, then you will make acceleration as subject of formula. But if you are given, again, you can see that if I, if, if I put W as mg, then I will have very interesting relationship. That is mu mg cos theta that is equal to mass time acceleration. And if I, uh, if I take this mg as common, then I will get sine theta minus mu cos theta that is equal to mass time acceleration. So you can see that again, acceleration is independent of mass of object, even if friction force is there, that is mu cos theta. So if, if you will increase friction force, then this factor will increase, so acceleration will decrease if you increase coefficient of friction. And if the surface is smooth, then the coefficient of friction becomes zero. And then you can see from this relationship, if you put mu zero, then you will get acceleration as g sine theta. And this is same as we have obtained in the previous situation that if the surface is smooth, then the acceleration is g sine theta. And the above case is the special case of this case where friction is, if we put friction force, the coefficient of friction as zero for smooth surfaces, the coefficient of friction is zero. So we should get the same answer. So now let's discuss the connected bodies on inclined plane. This is again, very interesting situation. If you have inclined plane and uh, there is fully attached over here and you, what you have, you have 
two messages. One is this in string is attached to two messages, another message is hanging in this way. So let's say this mass is M1, this mass is M2. So what will happen initially, if we assume that these two system, these two objects are in equilibrium and uh, we have to write the equations for uh, tension and uh, let's assume that this surface is smooth initially. And uh, this this object, this uh, these two objects are in equilibrium, and we have to find the expression for tension. So we will discuss. We will write down all forces acting on each object. On this object, there are two forces acting. One is weight of this object that is acting in the downward direction, and other is tension in the string that is acting in the upward direction. Tension provides a pulling force. So tension is always towards the pulley. This pulley is smooth. So we will assume that there is no friction force on this pulley and string is inextensible. These are two forces, only two forces acting on this object. So if this object is in equilibrium, then net force on this object M2 will be zero. And so the tension will be equal to the weight of all. Okay. And on this object, tension is acting in this direction. This is very important. And another force is component of weight that is that is acting in this way. And this is, you know that from all previous situation, you know that this is W sine theta. And this component of weight is W cos theta. Okay. So T will be equal to uh, mg sine theta. T will be equal to uh, mg sin theta okay this this is m1 g sin theta if this if this system is in equilibrium okay so the normal contact force again will be equal to the uh, this component of uh, weight but if it is stated that this this surface the inclined plane is rough and this object is at point of slipping in the upward direction, then you know that the friction force will be acting in the downward direction. And if it is at limiting equilibrium, then the friction force will be equal to mu time r. But instead, if it is stated that if M2, now this is another situation, this if M2 is uh, greater than this, uh, this component of uh, weight of M1, M1, M2G, that is weight of this object is greater than M1G sine of theta. Then what will happen? This object will go down and this object will accelerate in the upper direction. And we have to find, write down the equations for acceleration and tension of these two objects. Now the situation is little different. And now these two objects uh, are accelerating and this object is accelerating in the upper direction and this object is accelerating in the downward direction and acceleration the magnitude of acceleration in these two objects will be same but the direction obviously is different and we will talk about the magnitude so what is the net force in this object m2 obviously if it is accelerating in the downward direction then this force m2g is greater than this this tension t so if, if it is accelerating down, M2G is greater than this T. So the net force on this object is M2G, that is downward force, greater force minus tension that is equal to mass time acceleration according to Newton's second law. So let's say this is first equation. And I am assuming that this surface is smooth. And uh, what is the net force on this object? On this object, Tension is acting in the upward direction parallel to the plane and in the downward direction, there is a component of weight that is M1G, weight is equal to M1G and this is M1G sine theta. So tension is greater than M1G sine theta. This is component of weight 
that is acting parallel to the plane and this is equal to mass time acceleration this is according to this equation f net is equal to mass time acceleration and these are two equations for these two objects okay what will you do if you have to find acceleration you will add these two equations because over here tens there is a negative sign with this t and this there is positive sign with this t in the second equation if you add these two equations then what will happen tension will cancel out okay so what are we are going to do we are going to add these two equation and this will give us m2g minus m1g sin theta is equal to m2a plus m1a so i had to find acceleration so this is m2g minus m1g sin theta is equal to m2 plus m1 times a so what is acceleration this factor will go there and we will uh, divide with this factor that is m2g minus m1g sin theta over m1 m2 plus m1 okay so this is the ex uh, expression for acceleration and if i take uh, g common i will get m2 minus m1 sin theta times g over m1 plus m2 if you had to find tension you can put a value of acceleration in any of these two equation to find a find the expression for tension okay so uh, if if this surface is becomes perpendicular then you know that theta becomes 90 degree and uh, then acceleration will become maximum okay if if you will increase theta then this component will will increase and overall acceleration will decrease decrease because this is m2 minus m1 sin theta times g okay so this is very interesting or uh, and you can see that how to deal with this type of situation but you can see that if instead of smooth surface you have rough surface and you have to find expression for acceleration and uh, tension what how you will tackle this if instead of this surface is rough then there will be no change on this equation on equation of this object if it is accelerating down uh, so equation for this object will be same m2g minus tension is equal to mass time acceleration this is equation for m2 because the net force is m2 g minus tension and for this object equation will be change and this object is accelerating in the upward direction so friction force will be acting in the downward direction so upward force is tension that is t downward force is uh, w sin theta that is m1 g sin theta plus frictional force that is equal to mu time this normal contact force mu time this r so what is r r is equal to if you equate perpendicular forces r is equal to m1 g cos theta so i should write m1 g cos theta this is this is downward force that is equal to m1 time a okay so if i add these two equations what i will get i will get m2g minus m1g sin theta this minus will be multiply with this minus mu m1g cos theta is equal to m1 plus m2 times acceleration okay so if i make acceleration as subject of formula then this is m2g 
माइनस एम वन जी साइन थीटा माइनस म्यू एम वन जी कॉस थीटा डिवाइडेड बाय एम वन प्लस एम टू एंड इफ द सरफेस इज स्मूथ देन म्यू इज जीरो आई शुड गेट द सेम एक्सप्रेशन एज आई गॉट इन द प्रीवियस एग्जांपल देन इफ आई पुट म्यू एज जीरो देन दिस फैक्टर विल बिकम जीरो and i will get the same expression as m2g minus m1g sin theta divided by m1 plus m2 this is how you can uh, you can find the equations for acceleration on the inclined plane okay so if the surface is smooth and if the surface is rough now let's assume that our inclined plane is like this we have two inclined planes and uh, we have to write equation let's say this this surface is making angle theta and this surface is making angle alpha and if there is a pulley and we have two masses one is over here and one is over there and this is strain let's say this is m1 and this is M two, and if it is stated that if these two objects are released, and if it is stated that this goes down, and this goes up, and we have to find the equations for uh, acceleration and tension, and instead, if it is stated that both surfaces are rough, and for this surface coefficient of friction is mu one, and for this surface coefficient of friction is mu two. Okay, so. what will you do first of all you will write direction of tension and tension in the string is same everywhere so everywhere tension is t and tension is always towards pulley and this tension is providing a pulling force to these two objects and what will what will i write for, i will resolve weight of this object that is m1g into two components you already know this that this component is perpendicular to the surface that is m1g cos of theta this is theta and this component is parallel to the plane that is m1g sin of theta and the other force is normal contact force that is r okay so where will be the friction force this is accelerating downward this is moving downward so friction force on this object will be acting in the upward direction and let's say this is f r now let's discuss this object the weight is acting in the downward direction that is m2g and i will resolve this weight into two components it's very important how to draw a triangle so sorry this is alpha if this is alpha this is alpha and this component is m2g cos of alpha and this component that is acting parallel to the plane is m2g sin of alpha and this is accelerating in the, this is moving in the upward direction so friction force on this object will be in the downward direction fr now let's write equations for this object m1 for m1 as it is accelerating acceleration is in the downward direction so net force will be in the downward direction so downward force m1g sin of theta must be greater than tension and friction force so net force will be m1g sin theta minus t plus friction force and friction force will be mu1 and r will be equal to m1g cos theta this r is acting in this way m1g cos theta m1g cos of theta this is total force in the upward direction this is in the upward direction this is in the downward direction so this is equal to mass time acceleration and for m2 acceleration is in upward direction so tension must be greater than the sum of these two forces 
tension minus downward force parallel to the plane is m two g sine of alpha plus frictional force that is mu two and r over here will be equal to m two g cos alpha m two g oh, oh sorry this is this is theta this is, i'm sorry this is theta so this is uh, m two g cos of alpha this is m two time acceleration so what will you do you will add these two equation tension will cancel out and you will get the expression for acceleration this is the most general case where both surfaces are rough and uh, in exam you can uh, have a situation that is the special case of this situation you may face both surfaces as smooth or one surfaces as rough so uh, to conclude the whole discussion what i have done in this lecture i have discussed the situations different scenarios on the inclined plane first of all i we discussed uh, if the object is in equilibrium on the inclined plane then how to deal with it the basic idea is to resolve those forces which are making some which are which are neither parallel to the inclined plane nor perpendicular to the plane resolve them and uh, find the components of those forces perpendicular to the plane and parallel to the plane and then use if the system is in equilibrium then the net force is zero if it is uh, accelerating if it is in motion accelerating then net force is not zero then you have to use f is equal to ma okay so if acceleration is constant then you can use all equations of motion for for this motion okay so if you have any question you can post your question in the comment section i will be there to answer your question thank you